Andy Killick has been living with an incredibly rare condition that's eroding the surface of his eyes. Even minor irritations are excruciating, leaving him stuck in darkened rooms for days on end. There's very little you can do. It's just sitting there, you're trying to get to sleep just to try and pass the time. You can't do anything, you can't think about anything else because all you can see is this ice streaming and pounding in your head. All his life, he has been told it is untreatable until he was referred to a specialist in pioneering laser eye surgery, Mr. Barsam. Being able to do laser eye surgery for NHS disease indications is something that there's only about 10 centres in the UK that can do. So unless the patient is either referred into one of those specialist centres or knows to go there, then they're unlikely to be able to access care. Andy's disorder gradually erodes the surface of both eyes. It affects one of the front layers within the cornea. Normally, it's seen as a clouding. And if you end up with infections due to the surface of the eye breaking down, then there is a risk of um, blindness or becoming very severely affected. Andrew came to me with really ser serious problems affecting his cornea, a build-up of scarring and clouding. Put it open wide as you can. If Andrew was to get worse, then he may have painful episodes happening quite frequently and he may suffer from blurring of vision all the time. Mr. Barson believed Andy could be treated with pioneering laser surgery. Laser eye surgery has been around for over 20 years, but the idea of using laser eye surgery for some of these specific disease indications has probably only really been around since the late 90s. So there's a lot of patients out there, unfortunately, who are told that nothing more can be done, when actually there's a lot that can be done. Mr. Barsam has confirmed that Andy is suffering from the same condition as his father, a genetic disorder called Reese Buckler's corneal dystrophy. Reese Buckler's dystrophy is a dystrophy of one of the layers on the front part of the cornea, and it causes clouding, but also it can cause the surface of the cornea to break down. It's so rare that we don't actually know exactly what the prevalence is, but it's estimated that in the UK it affects a few hundred people. Today, Andy has come to London to have pioneering surgery on his eye. But there are risks. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel a bit nervous. All so, right. Yeah. Well, come on in, come and have a seat. We'll, uh, we're going to look after you. Cheers. We're going to give you some drops to numb the eye. I think he's obviously nervous about having actual surgery done, because obviously there's always a risk, isn't there? You just have a seat on that stool just there for me, please, Andrew. Before the operation can begin, the doctors create an astonishingly detailed digital map of Andy's eyes. OK, so we're going to do a scan for you now. This will come very close to the eyes. We have access to a cornea OCT machine, which allows you to see the cornea in three dimensions. We can see where the clouding is, and we can then target and drive the laser to only remove the tissue that's diseased and nothing else. Brilliant. Sit back, please. We're all done for scans for now. The cutting-edge surgery is an incredibly delicate procedure with no room for error. And Andy will be awake throughout. Are you comfortable there? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. OK. Look down a little bit. We use a little clip to keep the eyelids open. Open both eyes wide. It's only feels weird for the first 20 or 30 seconds. It's all clip here. You're doing really well. And again, try and open both eyes wide as you can. And drops to numb the surface of the eye. Again, just take nice deep breaths. And can you see that flashing green light for me? Yeah. I just want you looking at that all the time. Uh -huh. so it's a bit lower. We fire a laser in two different uh, sequence of pulses. Each wave of pulses will fire thousands of different times. One sequence of pulses is to remove the skin cells which line the cornea. And look straight ahead. So you've removed the lining of the eye just with the first laser. That will regrow in a few days. And now we're going to use a second laser. The second sequence of pulses is basically to remove the clouding that occurs due to the corneal dystrophy. We're just washing off this, uh, this anti-scarring agent. And now we're going to put a little healing and protective contact lens over the surface of the eye. Good, look down a bit more. And that's all done. Well done, Andrew. I'll just sit you up. Take it easy. Good. 
That was the weirdest, strangest thing okay. I've ever felt, yeah. All right, so you're going to go into the recovery area. Yeah. Sit down and relax, okay. and I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Thank you. Only one eye will be treated today. Once it recovers, the other will be operated on. I think the worst time will be the next two or three days, but it will get better every day. Tomorrow morning might be a bit worse than yeah. today, but what I expect is that by Saturday or Sunday, he'll kind of turn the corner. Two weeks later, and Andy's eye is recovering. The surgery went really well. I can see, I'd say, about 50% out of the eye. It's healing well, and it's a couple of weeks, and should get more vision back. The ability to change people's lives for the better using this kind of technology is amazing. You know, you don't realise until you see something like this how it can affect somebody and affect their life. It'll, be, it'll just be a massive lift for him. That's all right.